Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to fit a new front suspension arm on this 2012 Ford C-Max. Just before we get into the video, I'll just show you we've got a new suspension arm here. Uh, if you check out the links in the description below, I put links to new arms where you can get them from, the part numbers, and I put links to all the tools that we're using as well, and the torque settings if there is any that uh, I need to update you on. Now obviously using two poster ramp does make the job a little bit easier um, but to be honest they're not too bad to do without a ramp. All I do is just jack it up quite high on the on the sill here, put an axle stand under it um, just to give yourself a decent bit of access around it. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. I've got quite a few other videos on the C-Max, I've done the timing belt on this one that you might want to check out but there's a few others on there as well. Um, just for now, I'll get it up in the air, get the wheel off, and then run you for a, for a step at a time. Right, so now that we've got it up in there, I'll just show you everything. We've basically got a pinch bolt for the ball joint, just a torque headed bolt with a nut on the back there. We've got two vertical bolts at the back. So you might need to get on the nuts at the top just to undo them. Um, but the front bolt comes through from there and you can see as it's, you can't actually fully get it out. So um, next thing we're going to do is just take the under tray down. Fairly straightforward to get down. Got this little trim across the top. You're going to need to undo they're all, it's a load of torque screws holding it on. You're going to undo the three torques on there to take that down. And that just allows you to access the other screws under there. And then for the under tray itself, just got a few torques across the back, a couple on the side and these three on the front, so we'll just get all them off and then run you on to the next step after that. I'm just going to want a Torx 30 socket for them. Right, so now that we've got the under tray out of the way, just clearly see just this sort of front subframe section that's blocking that hole there to get the, the front bolt out. So all we need to do, it's got two 10 mil bolts there, You've got a 13 mil added bolt here, it just goes right the way through. I'm pretty sure this is a captive nut there. If, if it's not, you'll have to put a spanner on that, but I'm sure it's captive. Um, but just before you do it, you always want to just use a bit of use a wire brush, give that a bit of a scrub up, put a bit of penetrating oil on there as well. And you can just get to the back of the 10 mils as well. So I'll just get them off quick and get that out of the way. So now I've got that out of the way, with it loosened off, you can just simply pull it round and out of the way there. And you can now access the 18mm headed bolt. So the uh, next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to leave them tight for now. I'm just going to now slack it. While I um, lube them bolts up a little bit there, I just put some penetrating oil around the board joint as well. I'll just clean the threads up on there. These don't look pretty good, that. they don't come off too bad normally, but it's always worth just getting a bit on there, just trying to soak it around the ball joint. It's just, it just can be a little bit tricky to get out. Next thing I'm going to do now though, is just undo the pinch bolt nut, just tap the bolt through, and then we'll get the, um, we've got a tool that I'm going to use, that always works pretty well to pull the arm down, so I'll just run you through that now. It's a Torx 50 for the bolt. I've just got the bolt out there. A couple of different ways of getting them out. All I did there was just take the just take the nut off. You can just try and sort of use a buzz gun, try and turn it on the bolt a bit to crack it off. All I did is just put the bolt, put the nut back on, just so it doesn't damage the threads, and hit hit the nut with a hammer that way, 
just sort of clean it. You can always, as you take the nut off, it will clean the threads up a little bit. Uh, you never really want to be hitting the bolt directly with a hammer. And if you are going to use just a hammer on it, you always want to be using a copper hammer. Well, I did just, just keep doing that to work it through a bit and then just use the punch in the center of it. So, uh, but that got it out okay. Just going to put a bit more penetrating oil in it now. And then we'll use the, the bar to get it out. I've got this suspension arm pull tool. I'll put a link in the description below, below to these because it's a mega handy bit of kit. But all you do is just simply hook it over the arm and you can just pull down on it if you need to. With someone pulling down on it, you can give it a little bit of a tap. Um, but if you haven't got one of these, the best way I find to do it, or the way I used to do it, I mean, you can get ball joint splitters uh, that you just knock in, but they're a bit rough. Sometimes you find them, it doesn't matter if you're replacing the arm, but you tend to find you split the boots real easy with them. So, But if it didn't have that, normally like a really long bar, you put it through the arm here and sort of rest on the underneath of the body there and you can pull it down sort of right at the front, putting a bit of load on it that way. You might be able to sort of get in with a, a pry bar against somewhere else to pry it down, but these bars work really well. So if you can get it down a little bit, nice little tip is when you just just as you get it down a little bit, spray a bit more penetrating oil in it, just give it a tap up again with a hammer and you'll find it will come out really easy after that. So we'll just give, have a go at getting this one out now. Uh, it was actually quite tight in there on this one tonight. Um, just with this tool here, normally with two here, so one person can really put a lot of weight on it, or sometimes you just get above with an hammer, and that just helps. It comes down quite easily with that, but that was mega tight. I'm um, doing it on my own. I do the way we use this tool sometimes is just you can sort of lean on it, put the load on it, and you can knock it just with the hammer on there, and that obviously sort of taps it down. So, but it's quite tight. I just had to just to help as well. You don't always have to do this. Um, you've got, got to be a little bit careful, but I just, put a chisel, I just had to pull the ball joint shield back a little bit so I could get in with a chisel and just sort of put it in. You don't want to obviously splay it apart too far because you can if you're not careful. You can obviously crack the bottom of the hub there. Um, but you can only get it in so far um, just because it'll hit the, the ball joint. But if you just get it in, a bit of an angle so it just leaves you enough of a room to get over with the tool still. Or getting with a bar, it just helps just splay it that little bit, crack it open so you get some penetrating oil in there as well. We could just see I had to sort of get it down a bit, lube it up, knock it back up, and just work it a few times to get it out. Uh, but now that the ball joint's out, I always like to leave these in tight when we do the ball joint because you want it nice and solid while you get it out because these bolts are really easy to get out. So the next thing we're going to do, just undo the 18 mils, the one out of there. Can't remember, I think it might be a captive nut on the other side. If it's not, obviously, we'll have to get the spanner on there. And then we'll just do these other two bolts up there as well. And then we can drop the arm down. Now, the reason we're replacing it tonight is these back bushes. Pretty knackered. Um, but the ball joint actually had a little bit of play in it on this side as well. Um, the back bushes there, when you put a bar in there, the bushes are well knackered. There's a lot of play in there. But you can just see the rubbers all sort of perished and cracked as well. Now, you can get these bushes separate. Um, but to replace them, You've got to take the whole arm off anyway, and this you can't just, the bush essentially sort of presses on the back, but you can't just knock it off. You have to basically cut the whole bush off, put it in the press, and press the bush on. So it's not too bad to do, but you have to line it up right. It's a little bit tricky just to get it jigged up in the press right to do it, but uh, sometimes we'll put these bushes on. Uh, but say, with there being a tiny bit of play in that ball joint, it's just a lot easier, it saves a lot of time to put the arms on it. So. Um, we'll just get them, all them other bolts out now, get the arm off. So it's a captive nut on this front bolt, but these two upper ones are just a nut on the top. You know, a little 20 mil, 21 mil uh, spanner to hold the nut on there to get them off. See the bolt goes right up, 
through the anti-roll bar bracket there as well. So just get them off. Just got the nuts on the top there. Front nut you could get them from this side, but the back nut, if you just go up through the little gap there, you can just tend to get your spanner through and on it from the back. So now that we've got them off, I'll just pull the arm out of the way. That's the suspension arm out. You can just see the roll bar sits on the top of that. So you just need to make sure. Show you quick. To refit the arm in, it needs to go underneath the roll bar there. We just obviously set the spanner and the nut up there. So, um, as, you, as you can see, not too bad a job to get off, really. All we're going to need to do now is just get the new arm. We're just going to swap the um, sort of ball joint guard over, put that onto the new arm. Then, we're basically just going to refit everything into place, uh, build it back up. I'll just run you through the torque settings. I mean, I'm just using a buzz gun just to sort of nip it up by hand. Um, but I'll put links and uh, a list into the proper talk settings for everything as well. Now, when you've done the suspension arm, you do really want to be tracking it up. Obviously, if you're just putting the arm on at home and you can't track it up, you're going to have to leave your... You don't want to be cracking your track rods off. But I'm tracking this one up here tonight, so... If you're just going to clean it up, basically clean all your threads up here on the track rod and just give them a good, really good scrub up and a bit of a spray with some penetrating oil. Uh, but I'm going to do that and crack the nut off as well and then track them up. So if you just see me doing that on the video, just you don't really want to be cracking it off on your own unless if you're going to be taking it to track it up somewhere else. So um, we'll just fly through the video now as we get some bits swapped over and run you through the torque settings. Best way I find just to get the arm in. I've just pried the bush up there. Just try to focus on that. And just use a little bit of metal. I just had a big nut there. Just sort of wedged it under. Otherwise, just a little bit tricky to get the top over there. So if there's two of you doing it, it's sort of a bit easier. You can just get one of you to pry the bar up while you slot it in. But I slot that in there, and then as I tap the arm in, I just push it out the back, and then I'll grab the nut from the back after. Just lightly tap the ball joint in for now. I don't want to knock it fully home. What I'm going to do when I'm ready, I'm just going to tap it in gently, and you want to watch for the little cutout groove in the ball joint lining up bang on there. Where it lines up, it's not all the way in as tight as you can get it. You'll just see there's like a little half moon cut out on the ball joint. I uh, forgot to show you before putting it in. Well, that's obviously where the pinch bolt will go through. So, what I'm going to do now is tap this into place, and you always want to put your bolts in and start them by hand before you sort of uh, just buzz them up. So. just going to use a ratchet just to start them off and I'm just going to lightly wind all of them in just get all the threads before I nip them all up as well and it just makes it easy you've got a big screwdriver a big bar and you can just sort of use that to leave a uh, bush into place Just using a copper hammer there just to knock it to line that up just sort of hitting on this bit you don't really want to be hitting right in the center of the bottom of the ball joint cup there i'm just going to put some copper grease on the bolts before we refit them all the other bolts are all started you can 
like with this one here it's a little bit tight to get it through just to get it lined up on the bush the other side and give them as long as it's not too hard give them a bit of a tap just sort of pulls it through and centers it and just wound it with the ratchet a few times just to get the thread started but all the threads are started on them so i'm just going to grease them up copper grease the bolts up now put these through there nip all them up nip the 18s up and again i'll just i'll put a list in for the torque settings on that as well That's that, so I'm all fitted now. Everything's knit back up. All, uh, all I'm left to do with now, so I'm just going to crack them off, clean them up, and crack them off, ready to track it up. Um, but other than that, it's just a case of dropping it down, putting the wheel on, talking the wheel up. I'll just leave the video recording while I finish it off. Just put the torques in for the wheel on there. And um, that's basic suspension arm replacement done. So, so you can replace the arm, all the back bush. But you've got to take the arm off to replace the bush anyway and you can get bolt on ball joints for these um, but you can see these are riveted on so to replace the ball joint you'd have to uh, grind the rivets off as well so makes it a bit easier job if you're fitting an arm that's all uh, but i thought i'd share the video in case anyone wanted to have a go at theirs hope you liked it if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and uh, don't forget to check out some of the other videos thanks for watching and see you next time